What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to TOJ Talks. I'm your host, Will Parkinson, at Will Pod 11 on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. TOJ Pod, TOJ Talks, all 32 Pod. I'm almost as busy as the man I'm joined by. Uh, not a, not not a quite. We are officially game week. Uh, we'll be releasing this you know, Saturday morning. It'll be two days out uh, from Jets Niners. Lejay Duzel. Lejay, how we doing, man? How's, uh, how's everything going? Good, man. Uh, you know, this is the busy time of the year, Will. College football started two weeks ago officially with week zero you know week one was last week now we're into week two so prepping for my college game uh called college games for espn and then also my cbs sports uh studio gig which i have a sunday show pregame um for all the you know one o'clock and four o'clock games <clears throat> so you know it's just a busy time of year man <laughs> Yeah, you're, we got a we got a matchup of two of your former teams, obviously uh, on Monday. Um, I want to just start with kind of you know you did your predictions, obviously you know for CBS, and um, I think any Jets fan would be quite happy they got shared in about every single group chat I'm in. Of, oh, Jay's got you know a bunch of stuff. So I guess kind of walk me through where you're at expectation wise, and then I want to just dive in a little bit to this Jets Niners matchup. But expectation wise, I guess for the season and what's the successful season going to look like for them? What do you? How do you feel coming out of camp versus maybe how you felt going into camp for them? Yeah, I think bare minimum playoffs for sure. I mean, when you look at the Jets, they have the longest uh, streak in regards to not going to the playoffs in the four major sports <laughs> in America. So obviously that's something that needs to end this year. A lot of people had expectations for it to end last year. When you sign a future Hall of Famer like Aaron Rodgers, it, it, you almost almost expect your team to go to the playoffs. And then after four plays, it was over for the Jets, right? So when you look at this team, you talk about my expectations before camp, going into camp. You know, before camp, it was playoffs minimum. After going to camp and spending time with this team on multiple occasions, and, you know, I did my training camp tours all, of, you know, across the NFL, um, saw all three cross practices for the Jets. This team has a chance to really be special. And that's not me just being a homer, right? When you just look at the togetherness and closeness of this team and how they compete day in and day out. And then I think the biggest caveat is you have a motivated Aaron Rodgers. Like, I don't want to say a pissed off, but like, this is cliche to say, but the old chip or boulder on the shoulder, right? For Aaron Rodgers, because you've heard him come out and say multiple times, like, give me all your doubts. Like, I love that. It's going to fuel me. I want people to believe, you know, at 40 years old, I can't bounce back from this injury. And I think for me, Will, the biggest thing that I wanted to see in regards to seeing if Rodgers was truly back was that mobility. We know for the longest time in the NFL, whenever he got out of the pocket, this was the most dangerous man in football, right? And I saw that. I saw the Carolina first. I was like, okay, there's a glimpse of it right there. And then when I looked at the cross practice with the Giants, which was the last competitive period that the Jets starting offensive defense got to go against another color. I saw it there. I saw him evade some pressure, get out to the right, find Garrett Wilson down the right sideline for a touchdown, right? And I was like, okay, that's the Rodgers that I'm accustomed to seeing, right? The guy that was in Green Bay that gave everybody nightmares. And then some of the throws that he made, I remember standing next to Joe Douglas um, at that cross practice for the Giants. The sidearm to Alan Lazard on fourth down in the red zone in that cross practice was, it was unworldly. Like, uh, there's not many quarterbacks making that throw. And we both, me and Joe Douglas, just both looked at each other and were like, bro, that's not even fair. It's not right. It's not right. So, when you look at this, I think, I know, again, you have to put this into perspective. When the Jets haven't been in the playoffs as long as they've been there, like, getting to the playoffs is obviously, it would be a major accomplishment right but I think for the way that this team is set up like nah I don't think that's good enough like they need to make a run in the playoffs because again we don't know how many years Rodgers is going to be here both of our starting offensive tackles are on one-year deals uh you have to think with that 22 draft class that we had that literally was a franchise changing draft all those dudes are eligible for deals next year so like something's going to have to change eventually in the future. So I, to me, realistic expectations is making a significant run in the playoffs. Yeah. It's, and I'll give my probably, I mean, I put my preview in the preview guide, you know, kind of where I'm at. I, I have MS either being a two or three seed, I think, depending yeah. on, I think I settled for all 32 pot. I think I ended up saying they were the two, but I think for that, I said it was a three. It doesn't really matter. The point being, I think they're an 11 or 12 win team. Again, right. obviously injuries, obviously things of that nature. It might take them a little longer to gel, but 
they sure get out to a fast start. They should be able to finish strong. Like those are just the realities of it. The talent's there. Um, and we saw even last night, obviously we're recording this Friday morning and we're not going to get into the whole Ravens chiefs game, but I don't know. I think there's, I think the Ravens are really good. I think that I may be over underplayed how the little, the little bit of the difference on the, in the front seven on both sides of the football. I think there was a lot of overperforming last year. I think guys like Clowney had his best year, Matabuke had his best year. And he's got, you know, whatever, we can get into that later on. I just think that they're still a really good team. I just think, the Jets talent wise should have a chance against anybody, even without Hassan Reddick, although he would be helpful. Yeah, I, I think, you know, Will, you talked about my predictions, right? I actually have them as the one seed uh, going 13 and four. Uh, it's because of the talent that's on the paper. Now, again, in the NFL, you got to have a little luck. Guys got to stay healthy. The ball has to bounce your way uh, once or twice here or there, <laughs> you know? Um, so I liken it to this. I say, people say I'm a homer, but you'd be hard-pressed to find many media pundits or front office guys that on paper say they just don't have a top-five roster in the NFL. Like, you'd be really hard-pressed. Now, again, does Asana Reddick add to that? Obviously, right? It'd be a major help, right? Uh, Because, you know, I've heard people say that he's a luxury. I don't know if he's a luxury. I mean, when you're number – when you're top four in sacks over the last four years, and the only three guys ahead of you are Trey Hendrickson and two defensive players of the year and TJ Watt and Miles Garrett, that's more than a luxury. Like, like that's a game changer, right? So that's not luck. Uh, yeah, that's the game. That's not a luxury. Like, like that's a game changer. Like, and then when you when you add in the fact that in the last four years he's led the league in forced fumbles, like that's changing the game, right? So um but I am excited to see this D line, uh, Tech McKinley. I always like a guy that gets a second chance, right? Because those guys are very appreciative of it, right? Because once football is taken away from you, it brings you into a new perspective. I think he's even spoke to that too. So I'm excited to see him. I think Jermaine takes another step, uh, which is amazing, right? Because he's a Pro Bowl player last year. I think the biggest question everybody wants to see is what are we going to get from Chris, Chris Clemens and then um, Will McDonald, right? Those are the big question marks going into this year. And then even Leonard Taylor, um, honestly, I thought this would be maybe a year where he played maybe three or four games, but it looks like he's going to be a regular rotational guy, right? Uh, just because the injury to uh, Fotu uh, that happened earlier in camp. So uh, again, when you look at this team on paper, you'd be hard pressed not to say this is a top five roster in all the NFL. Now it's all about staying healthy. And like you talked about gelling together, uh, I think the good thing is, even though Rodgers missed a good majority of last year, he was back practicing with the team in the back half of the season. So even though he wasn't with, like, Garrett in the starting offense, just being around those guys, right, showing those guys what it means to be a pro, um, just being able to pick his brain. Like, this guy has played so much football. I think that really be will benefit the Jets going into this year. Yeah, plus, you know, and we made a lot of the OTA situation, or I didn't make a lot of it, but a lot of people did. He <laughs> yeah. was at all the other OTAs. He got the reps. You could see during camp the chemistry that they built on last year. That's not like, you know, you still got to get a full camp. They got whatever, the 800 or so reps that the first team. Kind of diving into this matchup, um, mm. obviously it's a, you know, a lot of, I mean, if they did this matchup two years ago, scheme-wise it would have been basically scheme for scheme. But Yeah, literally you know, the same it, literally almost. Literally the same thing, so. <laughs> You know, obviously Costa wants to run that Robert Sala, Seattle, you know, that that type of defense, obviously cover three, cover four, and, and mix and match different stuff. Both teams are built on defensive line. You know, the Jets obviously in secondary, I think, is much better than than San Francisco, although I think San Francisco's is good, not taking anything yeah. away. We'll see how Hufunga, who's I'm the biggest That's fan That's the big question mark, how yeah, healthy how's he, he is. Look? Yeah, how yeah. healthy is he going to be? Uh, I still think as good as these outside corners are for San Francisco, you can go at them a little bit. They're smaller corners. Um, obviously Warner, no green law, you know, we'll see, you know, what Devondre Campbell has left in the tank, obviously a player that was an all pro level guy two years ago. And then out of nowhere, and then kind of wasn't as good last year, obviously the last two years, I should say, um, how do you think this Jets offense matches up with the Niners defense? And then we'll flip flop it. But as I mentioned, I think, and I'm, I think you mentioned this, we've talked about this. I thought the Niners in the playoffs specifically last year leaned so much on those linebackers because mm. as good as the D-line is, Nick Bosa is special and that D-line is really good. I do feel like a little bit of the name value at this point outside of Bosa is a little bit better than maybe the production. Just at the end of the year last year, I just felt like we were like, oh my God, they have too many guys. And it was like, they weren't really hitting the quarterback until that much yeah. in the playoffs last year. Do you feel like that? I, I feel like this is a beat Fred Warner, get taken out of the game somehow. 
Yeah, <laughs> I'm, that, that's hard. I don't, I don't know how, that, but you like that try. dude's a like he's a freak. Like and like from day one, because he got there the year after I left, and I remember when they drafted him. I think it was from BYU, if I'm not mistaken. I was yeah. just like, "Yo, this dude's undersized." Like, I don't know if he's going. And then, like, I saw because I was able to spend some time with them because uh, I, with well, my charity, like, we always try to sponsor a group home around Christmas. So I spent some time with them around Christmas time and went out with the D line and we uh, sponsored a, a group home, had dinner and everything with them. And I was asking a few of the guys, like the Forrest Buckner and Eric, I'm like, "Yo, what's up with the Fred dude?" Like, I mean. Uh, you know, when they first drafted him, I was like, yo, this dude's almost like a safety. But as I was watching film, I was like, good Lord, this guy can run. <laughs> like, he pops on tape. And then he all of a sudden, I think, got to like 235, 240. And, and he's just a brick house. Like, like literally. Man, like, just. And the way he's able to die. I think that's the biggest thing with him. The way he's able to diagnose plays and the speed that he plays at, whether it's in the run game or in pass coverage. Like, I've seen him run step for step with slot receivers, which is ridiculous at the linebacking position. So, like, it's like you said, like, stop Fred Warner, but it's just like, yeah, it's easier said than done because it's just yeah. like he almost is in your huddle. He knows what you're going to run. And then with the speed that he plays with, he's going to out-athletic any offensive lineman. And then he has the physicality to take on tight ends or, or you know, receivers, right? He knows how to knock receivers to throw that timing off between the receiver and the quarterback. So when you just look at this matchup, right, I think, like you said, I think you said it perfectly, right? Well, this, Chardavius Ward has had a hell of a two years in yeah. San Fran. He has played really well. And I am interested to see that matchup between him and Garrett because I do think they will travel him, right? And Garrett's he's, got he's a little bit. a lot. Yeah, I was travel. like, Garrett, Garrett's got some motivation because – he kind of throws some jabs uh, at Garrett saying, you know, I think the guy's name is Garrett Wilson. So, you know, you could tell even when Garrett was answering those questions from the media, it was just like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. I haven't done anything, right? But he, it's in the back of his head. And then let's not forget during the Super Bowl, Sauce Garner had a tweet and Charverius Ward saw it, felt the way about it. He was like, teams that are always losing, they never even stepped to the Super Bowl, got something to say. He said he can't wait to pick Rodgers off, too. It was like, make him sign the yeah, ball. Yeah, I, he's, like, right, I mean, I, I love I love his I confidence, love though. Yeah. I love it. Like, and he's been like that since he was in Kansas City. So he's had that dog mentality ever since he was drafted to Kansas City. So um, that would be interesting, that matchup, right? And I, then, it, then I think it comes down to, like, what you said, right? our number two, three, and four guy versus their two, three, and four guy, right? Because that was kind of like their Achilles heel last year. Like, their second corner and slot, uh, you know, whether it's Lenore uh, or Thomas, like, those guys got picked on at times, right? So, like, I think Aaron Rodgers got to take full advantage of that. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, do they roll coverage to the two and three receiver and literally lock up Ward on Garrett Wilson? Because I think... Even then, Rodgers would still go to Wilson because I think he just has that much trust in the kid, right? So that that'll be interesting. But then the next element too, when you look at the San Francisco defense, teams that have gave given them issues, just like the Kansas City Chiefs defense, are teams that are physical in the run game, right? So we've kind of seen an evolution in this Nathaniel Hackett offense where it came kind of from that Lafleur Shanahan tree, where heavy zone based team. But I've seen in practice a lot of G scheme, right? And we even kind of saw that. Towards the end of last year, when Brees started really going, it was when they were running G scheme offense. So when I say G scheme, right, powers, counters, guard pool. Um, and then when you just look at the running backs they drafted, like that fits their skill set perfectly. Like a guy like Braylon Allen and Isaiah Davis. So I think they really want to get Brees going in this run game, right, to soften up that pass. Rush. I mean, that's the, the one thing I can tell you as a defensive lineman. You can't get a sack on a run play, right? Bosa can't sack you on a run play. So, like, run the ball, right? And – also, you know, a guy like Leonard Floyd, who has been a savvy bet, can sometimes get soft on the edge. Like, run at him. Like, get Jeremy Rucker in the game, right, and, and let him go to work in the run game with Tyler Conklin. So, uh, I, when I look at that matchup, I think the Jets trying to attack that two and three corner, obviously, and then obviously being physical in the run, like setting the tone, like especially on a Monday night football game on the road, like you got to set the tone pretty early to let them know what type of game it's going to be. Yeah, we, we know that teams have given 